Welcome back Capsuleers, this is part 2 of our tutorial missions tutorial in which we will be covering tutorial missions 2 through 4 and then we move on to the next one, Fortress in the Rocks Concord has intercepted seeker signals to a specific location espionage is suspected head to the site to interrupt their data transmission and we get 15,000 ISK for doing this, so I'll activate that. And now Aura wants us to look at our wallet, so just click on your wallet. And this shows you how much booty you've got. There's different views, different ways of looking at this as a breakdown um, transactions is pretty useful and then there's a market transactions and then there's a method here that you can use to give isk you can feel free to give me some isk if you have spare um, anything that you can give is useful for the ongoing uh, health of this channel uh, so we've looked at our wallet she tells us that you can use the wallet to check your ISK balance and transaction history. Okay, that's, that's great. That's enough gazing at your wallet. Close it down. Okay. And then we can move on to this next thing. Click walk to location. Now, what we'll see here is that I've got my directional scanner open and that is actually obscuring my uh, the little pop-up button that they have created which is there you can just move this out of the way uh, if you want I'll just move it over here actually and because um, we don't really need it heaps just so that you can see what's going on so if you're ever wondering why don't I have a walk to uh, it's because it's being obscured by another window they sit in the background always so here we are warping and our mighty corvette to take on some more pathetic bad guys who will offer pretty much no challenge whatsoever to us so feel free to do this in your corvette this is definitely designed for beginners this is easy peasy lemon squeezy you knew that you wanted me to say that. So let's. This is Sentry Towers. A little bit different. These guys can hit harder. Um, these particular ones don't, but in general, these guys can hit harder. Let's target that. So I've clicked on it. I'm going to target it, and you can see that it takes a little bit of time there to target. And I have targeted it. Let's swing around and let's find it. I can see it because it's got uh, it's got a circle around it. This one out here is another one, but I haven't targeted that, so I can't see it. I want to fly in, and I can just press approach and go straight towards it. That's generally not a good idea against anything that can hit real hard. So the trick is to fly in at a slight angle. So I'm just going to double click in space over here, and you can see it says approaching. But it's flying me at an angle over here at this kind of an angle and what that does is it just gives me a little bit of angular velocity which makes me slightly more difficult to hit when I get a bit closer in and you see that my gun ranges here are pretty limited 5000 meters is my fall off range and 860 meters I'm gonna click orbit there and start orbiting this and then I'm gonna press my gun and start shooting at this guy and you can see I'm hitting there. The blue is me hitting, a little aqua coloured. And then the red is him hitting me. And it looks a lot worse than it is. You can see the damage that I'm taking. I'll just zoom out right here. It's not hitting me for much at all. If this was a real sentry tower, it would be hitting me a lot harder. That one's dead. I'm going to click on this sentry tower. I'm going to lock target. And I'm going to just eyeball him wherever he is, over here. And I'm going to double click ah, in space. And you can see it says it's aligning. So my ship is aligning to that position. And it's going to give me a little bit of angle. 
on the century town. Not that it's going to hit particularly hard anyway, but it's a good habit to get into not flying directly at things which have high DPS or damage per second. Against craft that are faster than you, you sometimes will have to, if you're brawling, like this ship is, this ship is brawling, I'm going to switch my guns on, and then I'm going to uh, orbit. This ship is brawling, it's getting in close and fighting, basically orbiting the target and shooting guns at it. This is called brawling. If you're brawling, you need to be fast, and this ship is not particularly fast. And we're going to see that in some upcoming fights, which are a little bit annoying, where they fit very close range guns to this ship. And then um, we have to try and pursue ships that are faster than us, which sucks a bit, really. Yeah, you just want to fit your ships right and know know what you're doing. Um, that was that. Yay, we've beaten those guys down. Alright, she wants us to improve our combat skills, so let's just see what we can do here. She wants us to open our character sheet. Did that. Death can be such an inconvenience. Yes, I friggin' agree, Aura, especially if you're flying something extensive. So she wants us to train gunnery skills. So go to gunnery, and she wants us to put surgical strike in. I fortunately... Uh, surgical strike... I do have a... I do have a point left in surgical strike. I have already started training surgical strike. Started out at rank one. But I'll, I'll drag this into the queue. Um, this... Oh, my one's six days. That's going to knock my other skill off. Uh, never mind. So I'll, I'll, I'll drag it in just for the, her sake. So now she's happy. And um, yeah, super. That's fantastic. So I'm going to remove that. <laughs> because I don't want to train that. I want to train, as we saw earlier, small projectile turret. So I'll drag that back in. And then I'll close the character sheet down. This is just some of the process that you have to go through with Aura. She's a pain in the ass. Um, open the tutorial to claim your reward. So we go to the agency, claim our 15,000 isk. Oh, look at that, we're rich. We've got over 100,000 isk now. So next one is communications in the area are being blocked. Find the source of the jamming signal and eliminate it, and we get 20,000 isk. So I'm going to activate that. And we should get a warp to location. Yep, blah, blah, blah from her. And oh look, we're locked under this thing. I'm just going to double click out in space. If you get tangled in an obstacle, which does happen sometimes, and it is can be annoying, um, double click out somewhere and it will kind of get you away from that. Now, this is an important thing to note when you're fighting in real proper fights. Try to avoid flying too close to obstacles, because if you bang into them, it will reduce your speed right down. And you can get tangled up like that, where basically your ship is sort of bu constantly bumping into this obstacle to try and follow its path, especially if you've set a warp location or something similar. So just be really careful about your orbits and uh, making sure that you're not going to bump into stuff because losing your speed in a fight can be not good. I'm going to click warp to location. Uh, warp drive active. Your speed is one of the things that is going to make it more difficult for the enemies to hit you. And so you want to be able to keep it up. If you're flying a huge battleship that is slow as crap, won't make much difference, but we're not there. We're flying frigates, and speed tanking is going to be one of the main things that we are going to use for defense. So you definitely want to make sure you don't get tangled up in objects, and you're able to keep your speed, and you're able to have angular velocity, keeping an angle to your opponents. So there's our next opponent over there. I can actually click him like that, and that will sort of select him. And then I can press target. I'm going to double click in space over here. His, he's sort of moving this way. 
If I expand the screen out a little bit, oh, there's a whole bunch of random crap in there. We can see his velocity. He's moving 149. Uh, he's now moving this direction. I'm going to just change my path over here a little bit. Um, and oh, this gets in the way. It's annoying. So he's close enough for me to shoot. I'm going to press F1. I'm going to click orbit. Oh, there's a nice close-up shot. We just about hit each other. You will be aware that in EVE, uh, hitting stuff is not going to kill you. You don't really take damage from coming into contact with other ships. But it will slow you. And this is something that's called nudging. I'm going to control click this one to select it. And then I'll see if I can find it. I'm going to click approach because I just want to see where he is. Ah, oh, there he is. So it'll turn my ship. Clicking approach will turn my ship towards the eluder. I'm just going to fly straight on into him now so that you can sort of see. Just keep an eye on that damage and see. Let's see if it goes up. He's 14 kilometers away. I'm going to, I'm going to click my afterburner. I'm going to burn straight towards him. And as soon as we get close enough, I'm going to press F1. That's inside uh, 5,000 meters. So about now, I'm going to press F1. And then I'm going to click orbit and see if we can get into an orbit. Some of these guys are faster than us, um, but I've got my afterburner on. So I should be able to burn into an orbit. I'm going to adjust that. I want to get rid of that Alliance and Corporation settings. But I won't do that right now because that would maybe confuse you so as you can see there's Rex so I'm going to turn my afterburner off I'm going to click loot and I'm going to click one of these Rex and I'm going to click open cargo and you can see it we're automatically on approach towards that wreck and once we get within two and a half thousand meters it will automatically pop up a um, a loot box for us and we can loot the wreck. So it's about to pop up now. Here it is. Oh, right in there. That's all kind of a bit funky. Um, why is that happening? Why let me loot it? Oh, it did. It's just really weird blacked out screen. I'm going to approach the other one. All right, it's because Aura's interfering with stuff and wants me to do stuff. Um, all right, in the chat window, you can talk to pilots in your immediate vicinity. To communicate with your corporation regardless of distance, use the corp channel. Okay, let's press continue. Great. So that's this channel here. You can click in here and type stuff and it will appear in here. Um, okay. Oh, and there's, we've just approached that and it's popped that up so I can loot that. And close my loot window. So she wants us to go back into the agency claim our bucks okay this time our objective here is to use our afterburner which we used just before our scanners have detected a spatial rift nearby Concorde suspects the seekers are attempting to relocate their operation prevent them from doing so but beware of gravitational anomaly anomalies maintaining space is essential and rewards we're going to get a Gatling auto cannon and some rounds oh that's good that's good um, if you're doing this as Galente you get uh, some light light neutron or some close range blasters which make doing this a pain in the neck they're good for close in but this ship is just too slow Okay, so that's our reward. So let's activate this. Uh, we've done everything we need to do here. And I'm going to make sure they click back on my combat tab. And we'll warp to the location. So we're going to fight some more dudes. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we're looking for red guys appearing on our uh, overview here. Once we're getting close, you can see the distance here. 
and there we've got our seeker pacekeeper uh, this is I can actually right click on here and show info and it'll show me oh Christ some things about the seeker pacekeeper give you a description and give you some attributes about this guy um, he deals primarily thermal damage and secondarily electromagnetic damage that's useful stuff to know in general I'm gonna control click him to select him oh he's too far away oh, let's approach him I'll switch my afterburner on as well because obviously this guy's a bit quicker so let's see he's selected in my overview let's see if I can target him there you go I've targeted him um, but I am not going to be able to do anything I'm approaching him directly because I think he's pretty quick so I really want to close range and I'll orbit him when I get in pretty close you can see he's not doing bugger all damage so it's not really a major threat I wouldn't do this against um, proper foes once I get inside 5000 I'm gonna press F1 which will trigger my guns there we go pressed it now my guns are triggering and as I get closer and closer I'm gonna try and get quite close to this guy before I start orbiting him um, and my orbit is set to a thousand. Oh, look, I didn't even have to, he's dead. So <laughs> that's how soft they are. So loot, I'm going to click on the target and I'm going to loot it. Oh, and I'm close enough that it pops up straight away so I can just loot those precious metal scraps. So now Aura wants us to dock at a station and so she's telling us to go in here and look it's flashing for us so we can see so all I have to do is right click on this location there's a couple of ways you can do this obviously I can click here I can press dock or I can right click and press dock and that will automatically fly me back to the station one thing to point out is that because I'm using a civilian Gatling autocannon you don't have to have any ammo these things basically have unlimited ammo uh, which might sound great but they are rubbish as you can see my optimal range is 863 meters which is pathetically short and the damage that they do is total crap as well so using better guns which I'm about to get and using some ammunition I can start to play with my ranges using different ammunition and I can also adjust the damage that I'll be doing by using different ammunition as well so ammo has different traits and some of it's very long range and does less damage and some of it's very close range and does more damage and then you can get faction ammo which is more expensive and it has better combinations of things so she wants us to open the agency again claim our rewards so this time we're getting a Gatling cannon and some carbonized lead s and this is interesting for me because I've never used this uh, stuff before because this is the first time that I've ever played a Minmatar character so it's kind of it's a little bit exciting for me I get to use projectile weapons that I haven't used before and play around with them and see what they're like Skill training completed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by donating Plex in game using your Plex Vault. If you are not able to give Plex, you can donate ISK. If you do donate, please make sure to flick me an Eve mail and make your donations to Exalted. That's E-X-Z-O-L-T-E-D. Thanks.